serious dark web users of Reddit, was there ever a point in your use that you felt you were genuinely in danger? What happened? Not the modern dark web, but back in the days of Usenet I posted some harsh CLH criticism in alt. Religion. Sceptology. Yes, that was a typo for Scientology, but I'm leaving it for context of a bunch of posts. The online threats were funny, but when I started getting death threats by mail I backed the fuck off. Edit. I didn't think this would blow up like it did, but to answer a few common questions. I posted a bunch of criticism of the cos in the Usenet group alt. Religion. Scientology. This was in the late 90s, and well before most modern forums and content aggregators like Reddit existed, Fark was the big one and it was just starting to get popular. I was high school, for non-Americans, grades 9 to 12. I was in high school, and was using my home computer as an FTP server for a whereas group on Ike, because I convinced my dad to sign up for a 90 day free trial of this new thing called broadband. I had 3 Mbps down and 1. 5 Mbps up. Of course we never cancelled it. They figured out who I was by using a QTEF vulnerability to get root directory access to my PC. The death threats were bad enough, but what really sticks with me is the malice of deleting my family photos including the last picture as us with my dad hole he was alive. I was the typical invincible feeling young adult, and I was more concerned about worrying my mom than I was about my own safety. This was long, before darksxing was a thing, and online threats going from email to handwritten letters was terrifying, but as a high school kid I never would have admitted it. Nobody asked, but if I was confronted in person I would have fought back. 18 years later, if they really held a grudge, and threatened me again with the same malice expressed in those letters I got, I would open the door with a gun in hand, and if they tried to get in, I would assume that they were intending to kill me and shoot first. This is a serious post so as funny as it would be to accept the previous statement with the autocomplete error shit first, I fixed it. I've written a couple of books about the dark web, which means I've spent a bit of pretty much every day of the past 8 years poking around inside. Over the years I spoke to, interviewed, and even visited many dark web identities, drug dealers and operators of darknet markets mostly. I attended the trial of one of the most evil people on the planet, Lux, the owner of her tooth decor, a child torture site, turned out to be a friendless unhappy kid who built his evil empire from his childhood bedroom, with his parents blissfully unaware of what was happening under their noses. The only time I felt even slightly in danger despite all this nosing around in there was when I helped uncover a hidden scam. The owner of Bisa Mafia, the most profitable murder for hire site in history, came after me when I started writing about him. He made loads of threats, you don't know who I am, but I know who you are, and where you live, but that wasn't scary, as I had access to the back door of his site thanks to a friendly hacker, and knew he didn't really want to hurt anybody. It took a bit of a darker turn, when he told the people who had signed up. To work as hitman on his site, and who he made video themselves burning cars with signs on them to advertise how legit his site was, then never sent them the promised money for doing so, that I was the owner of the site who had ripped them off. That could have become ugly, but luckily even the thugs weren't dumb enough to believe him. The only other time I've been a bit nervous was when Homeland Security wanted to have a friendly meeting with me on one of my trips to the US to attend a trial. They were friendly, but scary too. I've never personally felt I was in actual danger so to speak, since I take proper precautions, but early on I did accidentally come across a side slash forum, while exploring that was filled with snuff photos of women people had assaulted, and then knocked out or killed. Shut down my browser pretty quick after that, but felt uneasy for a long time after. I was a casual orderer of the dark web for a while, and got pretty big into it, and started buying slightly bulky packages of drugs. If you knew the markets for a while then you would know one called Alpha Bay was the best of the best the Amazon of drugs and fraud would be its best description. However it went down mysteriously one day and everyone assumed the owners just scammed everyone for their bitcoin. Partially true, but in the background it was actually seized the D. Everyone flocked to a new site called Hansa which had some sketchy design features, but it was the next best alternative. Turns out the Dutch police took over the site, and with cooperation of multiple governments ran a drug distribution onion site with over a million dollars of transactions for around a month. 
they were gathering information from unsuspecting users, including me, who bought with faulty security practices. Now this is where I started freaking out imagine trafficking drugs through the mail and the attorney general at the time Jeff Sessions makes a speech live on television that he was going to crack down and explicitly explains how fucked everyone on Hansa was because they have been gathering data for over a month and in a big dick energy move closes the site and puts up a banner in its place saying everyone who has purchased will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law during his live speech. I was shitting myself for a month as many arrests did occur, but luckily I guess I wasn't important enough and nothing happened to me. The idea that the dark web is an extremely shocking and dangerous place is largely inaccurate. It's mostly weird libertarian blogs and very sterile Amazon type websites for drugs, complete with reviews of different vendors. I own a fairly rare car that had a rare rarer code. I looked it up on Google and there was only one other person on the car makers forum that had the same error, and this guy took months and months going back and forth between car shops and the forum thread, to try to get the issue fixed. Everyone on the forum was pitching in, to try to help him. So I kept going through this long forum thread, to try to figure out, if he ever fixed it, and suddenly there's no more replies from the guy. Everyone was scratching their heads for a while. We thought he had maybe gotten the issue fixed, and didn't bother to update us on it. Then one day, a news article popped up about a really rich guy who died in a Thai jail cell. And then we connected the two stories and they matched up. The same make and model of the car in the news article matched up with his car. And they were both claiming to be in Thailand at the time. So what happened was that that same guy who was still talking on the forums got raided by the Thai police around the same time he stopped replying to the forum. Turns out that he was running one of the biggest dark web marketplaces where drugs were being sold and exchanged. It had something like 1 million dollars in revenue per day and he was hiding out in Thailand while living in luxury. They found him dead in his jail cell a few days later. They claim he died of suicide. You don't just stumble onto the scary parts of the dark web. You had to have been looking for something sinister if you happened to come across one of the sites. Even then getting access to said sites isn't as easy as most of them are invite based. Most of it is just the normal internet with questionable forums, think 4chan but slightly worse, and petty drugs. It's very hard to reach the criminal parts of the dark web, unless you have very specific errors and even then the host has the option to deny you access. However once you're in, it can become a slippery slope. There's Hitman, human trafficking and snuff films and such, but a vast majority of these sites are scams asking you to send them bitcoin. A small portion of users on the dark web would be there for this sort of stuff. However, buying drugs online is quite popular and widespread. Single vendors can have dollar sign 500,000 plus in lifetime sales. It's quite safe to use. You use PGP to encrypt your address so only the seller of the drugs has access to your private info. If your package is seized, they have no proof you ordered it. Unless they seize your computer and you have that information stored on it, you can use TEL slash USB to avoid this. Even if your packages get seized, you'll often get a love letter saying what they seized, and there is no follow up after that. Be safe boys and girls. Don't give out your information, or communicate with others, and if you plan on purchasing anything, use a secure Linux OS like Tails, use private keys, connect to a public Wi-Fi spot, not your house, encrypt all messages, use multi-signature markets, so your chances of losing your Bitcoin lessons, escrow preferably, never send your Bitcoins from a wallet, attached to you directly to the seller, tumble your coins first. And when the package arrives, don't open it for a few days. A friend of mine gave me all this info, and told me I should help you guys out. In college some friends and I ordered a 100 sheet of acid, using bitcoin, to our college P. O. Oh, boxes. We got pretty terrified, when it didn't arrive when it showed. We thought it was found by us, our own mail service, or the D. We were paranoid. Turns out they just shipped it later than they said. We got our 100 tabs, but that was a very stressful week and a half for all of us. Not really a dark web user, but I got darksked by an Iana Z group on the dark web, and ended up having to use the dark web to find the websites 
that had my information. Department of Homeland Security and the FBI showed up on my doorstep because they were threatening to send me letter bombs and send people to abduct and r slash 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 me. It was scary shit. They all fell of the face of the earth recently, so I'm just hoping the feds got to them. Edit. I elaborated more in the comments. Feel free to ask questions, but I might not give too much more information out. I don't want to be identified by anyone who's come across my dusks or is associated with the group who did this in the first place. Edit. Holy shit thanks for 4. 8k upvotes. Never gotten that many before Mayo. I hope everyone who saw this took this as a reminder to not fuck with people and mind yourself online. Scary world out there man. Scary shit. No. The dark web is actually not very exciting and it's very hard to use. The only danger you are in is getting a visit from the law after trying to buy drugs online. Edit. The deep web is non-indexed sites. The dark web refers to non-indexed sites that often require tour and often offer illegal content. The dark web is not exciting for one, because most of what a normal person would be able to find are honey pods run by law enforcement. To access the deep slash dark web you need an address, no google searching, and most addresses you can find on the clearnet are going to be compromised. If you're smart enough with this, you will probably be able to find a place that will let you buy drugs online and actually get the drugs if they aren't found by the mail service. Any hitman slash contract killer services you can find are certainly honey pots. You will not find some sort of snuff porn site or L33T hacker enclave where they will trace your IP etc. The ideas people have of the dark web are usually that last bit which just isn't something you're going to find. And you can find videos of people dying on the clear net you don't need the dark web for that. I actually learned how to access the dark web by listening to NPR. They had a segment where an author who was writing a book about it basically gave step by step instructions on how to do it. I did everything he said, and, by golly, it worked. Truthfully, it was pretty underwhelming. Mostly just drugs and counterfeit items, passports, money, etc. I did find some weapons with the serial number scratched off, pistols and shotguns, but nothing that would start World War 3. I also saw a couple ads for Hitman, but they seemed pretty hokey, and were most likely, undercover cops. I never felt in danger, but I have never gone back, because there's nothing I really want from there. No government agents have kicked down my door either. The only real difference between the internet you and I are using right now and the dark web is that you need special software or configurations to access it. You have plenty of opportunities of finding bad shit on the regular web. With that in mind, I'd say that the regular web is more dangerous since it lulls you into a sense of security. I mean, most people these days have a significant amount of their personal information on there. The dark web you're likely going to have a sense to be more anonymous. Personally, I just used it for playing a WoW private server back in the day, since the hosts didn't want to get a C&D from Blizzard. Religious Silk Road and CGMC user here. I used to get the stuff delivered to my dorm, but the package didn't come directly to my room. I had to go pick it up from my dorm building office. For my third or fourth order from Silk Road I got an email saying that a package had arrived for me, but when I went to pick it up I was told by a rap that my package was in the door's office. I was freaked out. I also for some reason was getting a lot of spam calls which added to my anxiety. I was scared shitless. I didn't go to pick it up for like 4 days and kept getting emails from the door to come pick it up. I didn't go because I thought that it was a setup. But after a couple days I said fuck it, because I had paid a lot of BTC for that order, so I went to pick it up. It was literally nothing, the people holding on to my order couldn't have been more nicer. They couldn't give me a reason why that package was delivered there and not to my dorm. So I just kept ordering more lol. Not dark web, but mid 90s web. I was 12, and obviously puberty was in control. This was chat room days kid I was acquainted with, an eagle scout nonetheless, had all these floppy, and I mean floppy discs full of pornographic images from some arsehole sapedly in Texas. Me and a few other friends were over, puberty, so were eager to see naked women. It soon took a quick turn with girls, that were likely my age. I immediately noped the fuck out, and never really talked to the kid again. But knowing the boy scouts I wasn't getting involved, 
that I was like 13, and didn't even wanna tell my mom I was interested in women. I regret that day a lot. I should have called the police. Sadly I just compartmentalized it. 1996 was weird. Someone who isn't me was on a drug marketplace once, where heroin, crack cocaine, sometimes PCP are listed, but if you're experienced, you don't even bat an eye. What that person did see once were pills pressed from the residue powders that ostensibly covered the press. These included mixtures of meth, fentanyl, Xanax, molly, amphetamines, GHB. Shit is scary, because you have no idea what exact ratios the mixture will be composed of, and with heavy hitting, high odd potential drugs like fentanyl, everyone wouldn't be surprised if that particular listing led to multiple overdoses. Not really it's just sometimes some creepy shit on the dark web forums. I have seen more disgusting things on 4chan, to be honest. Other than that you have to be specifically searching for that shit and even then it's hard if there is no one search engine but many, and with different results. The dark web is general dull most of the site is, just for dealing drugs other than it's dull. Not to say, that there is not some interesting site on there. 